Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you the lighting and render settings I've used to render this shot using only Maya software and basically no lights at all. Keep watching and I'll show you how. Alright, so this is the, the shot in Maya, the shot we just watched. And I'm going to show you the render settings I have here. Uh, first of all, again, I'm using Maya software, not Mental Ray, not V-Ray. This is the most basic render Maya has, and I still managed to get a pretty cool result with it, and I'll show you how. So let's go over the settings. I enabled color management. I changed these two into linear sRGB. Um, I'm, the format I'm rendering is Targa with a frame padding of four. Uh, I set up my frame right here. You, you probably know these things. You set up the camera you want to render. HD 720. I I cancel the uh, default light settings, so that's important. Otherwise, you have some kind of a default generic light in this in the scene. Under the Maya software tab, I barely changed anything. I just changed the quality to production quality, and everything kind of changed accord accordingly. I enabled ray tracing uh, for the shadows. I'll show you later how. And under render options, I canceled. I unchecked the multiply. So just know that um, it doesn't really matter why most of the settings here are pretty basic. I didn't do anything uh, advanced. Now the main thing I'm going to go over in this video are the render layers I've created. Now in case you don't know what render layers are, basically when you render stuff out of Maya, you, you don't just render one image uh, or an image sequence and that's it. Usually you would render a bunch of different image sequences and then you put them on top of each other in a compositing software such as Nuke or After Effects. I use Nuke. So in order to get the most out of the Maya software renderer, which is really the most basic render you can use, I had to create a lot of different render layers. And I'm going to go over them. I created 10 layers over here. You can see them on the right. Creating a render layer is really easy. You just select what you want to have in the layer and you create a layer from selected or you can create an empty one and add stuff later so let's see what layers do I have um, the master layer doesn't count you see there's a red X on it you, you don't render it it's just it, this one includes all the stuff you have in this in the in the shot so the first one is just the cube I call it cube and it's basically just our cube uh, doing what it, it was doing in the shot now the material I used for the cube is really so simple it's just a font shader and I increase the ambient color all the way up and I lower the diffuse color color all the way down so that it's, it, it is always showing the same amount of color all around which means it is not affected by lights I don't have any lights in this in this uh, shot and I'll show you how it looks when you render this that's it you see all the color is the same all over it, it, it is as if it's lit equally all over from from all angles and you saw that it took me like less than a second to render that that's super fast let's look at it again yeah it takes about two seconds my second render layer is the rim uh, of the cube now to do that all i did was um i went to the tune tab and I applied a rim light. When you apply that, it creates some kind of material around the object or the layer. I applied it to the render layer itself. You can apply materials to the actual layer and then everything in it is going to be uh, the same material. So what happens when you, when you apply this shader? It just creates some kind of rim, like white rim around it. It, w it wasn't, the settings were a little different, the default setting. I changed them a little bit. You can see what I did here if we go to the material. Um, so I changed the interpolation to smooth and I changed the colors a little bit. Uh, you can play around with it, change where you, how much white you want, to, you want it to be and how dark you want the dark parts to be. But basically, it just looks like this. And you'll see later why I have this layer. Okay, for now, let's just keep going. This is a world point um, layer. What does that mean? This is a special material that I created. It's really easy to create. I'll show you in a second. But what it does, I'll show you from here. 
what it does if I render this, you can see that it, the colors that it is showing is based on the Y, X, and Z axis. So basically, all the everything that is on the X axis is going to be a little red. Everything on the Z is going to be blue, and everything from the top is going to be green. So it's based on where the object is in the world. So let's render from uh, this angle. So you see, this is a little green because because he's on a he's on a on a slope. So this is considered more of a top, but it's more green here than it is here because this place is higher. And this is a little bit on the X and a little bit on the Z. That's why it's a little purple on the edges. So basically, it just it gives you uh, masks for later for compositing that you can control uh, colors and lights. It's really handy to have this kind of layer. I'll show you in the compositing video, which is the next one, how I use this layer. From now, for now, let's go on. The eye white layer is. I just I just applied a black surface shader. I'll show you over here. Sorry. I created a surface shader. Uh, which is this one over there. It just means that it's going to be one solid co solid color. And I applied it to the cube, uh, to, to the entire cube except for the eyes, where there's this white dot over here. And this is so I can have the, the white part of the eye on a separate layer. And I use that so that I can make it glow a little bit later. I'll show you. And then we have the ball. The ball is the exact same material as the cube, only with a different texture. The texture is not even a texture, it's just a ramp that I created. Let's look at it for a second. Yeah, it's the same font shader with the ambient color on the max and the diffuse on the minimum. And on the, on the color, I just added a ramp with these colors. This, that's the entire texture for, the, for my main character. And then we have the same stuff, the ball of the rim and the world point. You can see this a little better on the ball, maybe, to see what I mean. That like the, all, everything from the top is, is being colored green and everything from this side is being colored red and from this side is being colored blue. All right, this is for the characters. Now, I've, this is a depth pass I created so that we can use um, depth of field later to add some kind of... Um, you know, to have the background not in focus or the characters not in focus, to have like a nice <clears throat> realistic depth of field. So how do I do that? I created a render layer with all the objects in it, the ball, the cube, the background. And I just, oh, I under attributes, I created the preset that's called luminance depth. And that's a preset that is already made for, for creating uh, depth passes. But I changed something because I, I didn't really like the way it's set up. It's, it's, the way it's set up is it has some kind of weird connection on the minimum and maximum values, which is the range of grays you want to have. So I just broke that connection. And to know the minimum and maximum, you can just measure your, the distance from the camera to your character to know how much um, distance you want the depth to calculate. But it's I, I just guessed it more or less something like that. I don't remember exactly what settings I had. And then I just rendered here and there to see what it looks like. This seems pretty good um, for a depth pass. You have a nice range between the, the end to the beginning. And then you can change that, that gradient in the compositing software later. My next layer is the shadows layer. This, is, this was a little more complicated. This is actually the only layer where I have, I have an actual light. I know I said I didn't use any lights, and that's true, but to create shadows, just a little bit of shadow as I had to put one light in, it's not to light the characters, it's only to create shadows. So I created this um, directional light that, it, that is using ray trace shadows with these settings, and I created a floor material, which was just red, just the color red, and and it's, I think it's the basic settings of a Lambert. And I made sure that these don't render 
when I render the frame, but they do need to be in the scene because they're the one who's going to create the shadow. So to do that, you go to render stats of the object and you just cancel primary visibility. You need to still uh, make sure it casts shadows. Okay, and the floor needs to also receive shadows because the shadows are going to be on the floor. Same for the ball. No primary visibility, but it does need to cast shadows. So now when I render this frame, it's going to take a little while because this, this is actually the heaviest render I'm doing for this entire... This takes longer to render than all the other layers combined for some reason. I guess calculating shadows is a little uh, harder. So then all I get is a huge layer with the red color on it and the shadows. And then I use that to create to composite the shadows onto the scene. So let's let's see what it looks like. There you go. That's that's both the sad, the shadows of the ball and the cube. All right, my next layer, I didn't have that layer for every shot, but this shot because of the I need because of the perspective I needed to actually render the floor. For all the other shots, I just composited some kind of uh, 2D background as the floor. But for this, I, ju I just created the same material like as I created for the cube and the ball, but I just put a different texture. Uh, the texture was was my 2D floor texture. And it looks like this when I render it. That's it. So these are the render layers I use to create this. Uh, now you're probably wondering how how I managed to create something that looks like this when we haven't seen anything close to that in all of those render shot the render layers. Well, that's just part one. Creating the render layers and rendering them from Maya is only the beginning. The fun part and the creative part that allowed me to accomplish this is gonna happen in Nuke and that's gonna be on our next video. So stay tuned for that and thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and visit our website loopanimation.com.